Take off. Who's over here? Ragged Rocket Under King Pass. It took so long to navigate through this place the first time around. Oh, there's still more. Baratrude slithers up to you. Oh, it's her, it's her place. She slithers up to you as the Black Wagon passes through the skies above her former abode. Our kind, who lurk below. They would scarce believe we soar above them now. We told them that when Sandalwood came to fetch us, that we shall not return for some time. Our most accomplished laborers, with whom we shared so many moons in exile. We trust that they shall carry forth the reputation of our services, for we taught them all we know. Seems almost nostalgic as she lists off the various services provided at Big Bear Trudes. Curses, bombs, proteins, uh, potions, powders, cleaning reagents, sleep medicines, fungicides, seances. Big Bear Trudes earned quite a name for itself throughout the downside for these and other things. When we are finished here, provided we do not return from whence we came, we shall re return to our establishment and carry on our business there. For there is much demand. Well, hopefully you'll get to go home instead. But we'll see. Here we are. The spring of Jomware ha has always flown forth from the crushed carapace of Beolanthus. The legend of whose demise is a rather sordid tale. Perhaps you have already read it in the book. Belanthius, the Hive Titan, vanquished by the scribe Joel Marmenimane. From its remains flows a rejuvenating spring, which gladdens up the valley's desolation. Book of Rites. Not all believe the book exists, of course, nor the greater titans, nor the rites. I have encountered exiles believing that this titan perished quite by accident, rather than by, uh, a cunning trap laid for it by Joel Marmenimane. They took the titan for a common beast. Perhaps the stars shine down upon out-of-the-way locales such as this one to ensure that they alone shall witness the proceedings. Our options are Glue Hive. Gilmore expressed an interest in exploring the pools. Pamela has a hunch you may find something of value here. So we can go either way. Well, I've, been, I've given uh, Jadariel a number of attempts lately, so let's give Pamela a shot. I think. Jomuara Valley. You touch down in the heart of Jomuara Valley, where you first, where first you face the fates and the dissidents. You briefly wonder where they might be now and how they fare. You now have little time before having to set forth by land. Wondering about the fate and the dissidents. Well, we're about to face off against the dissidents next, so not much to wonder about there. Jomoware Valley. The downside prairie first appears serene. It is not. The soil there accommodates only the region's brutish native vines and overbrush. The most likely food sources prove poisonous. Thus, we journeyed further north. The climate there grew fouler to my senses though the Kur Jomoar found it amenable. This sprawling valley, pocked with long evaporated lakes, gives evidence to the, mo the monstrosities which roam this land. We found the region's western edge to be more pleasant, on the whole. Therein we found sources of fresh water, whereas over to the east we found the edge of the land's most hideous decay. Any updates from you? I can sense you out there, somewhere. What is it you want? Oh. I wonder if I've maxed out the number of encounters you're supposed to actually have with her at some point. Singing sand, the so-called singing in the sound, is the sound of countless screeching wheel mites. Ugh. From Jomara Valley. No, I don't want it. I'm scared of it. Not even singing. Alright, let's, ex let's explore Fall Flat. Something about the stark badlands of Fall Flat gives Pamitha a strong intuition to explore the area. Together, you set out to take a look. 
fall flat. The south roots and cross to Omara Valley is riddled with barren rock and bone. Even the wild curs of the valley avoid the oppressive heat of this place. I'll tag along. I could use some air. In the rain? Are you feeling good about that? There seems to be nothing in particular in the vicinity, but then Pamitha raises her voice. Just a moment, reader darling. I think I found us something. The question... The object in question is lodged deep in the ground and bears the mark of the rites. You sense... You may be able to secure its contents, but the mystic wards will not be easy to undo. Let's try to open it. Screw it. Oh, if you if you try not to open, if you don't try to open, it, you can pursue voca vocations. Nope, going for it. You sense whatever ins is inside the container has uh, benefited triumphants and the rites before. You focus all your mental faculties on the mystic wards sealing the box's contents. Soon you are left exhausted, but the box's lid unfastens. Inside is a talisman, placed there perhaps by one of your predecessors in the rites from ages past. It's the Star Splinter! Rank 10. When you fling, uh, when preparing to fling the orb, the bearer's charge up speed increases 40%. That's pretty good. A fleck of, sha of shaped rock fallen from the heavens. Its very shape tempts you to give it a good toss. So if you try to throw the uh, the orb, now it takes less time to get it to actually point where you want it to, because that's kind of the that's the time cost that can get you killed. But the really cool things that are like, wow, fling the orb, cool bonus, uh, are also talismans. So they're kind of mutually exclusive a little bit. Not a mechanic I use too much. I always mainly because I always lose when I try to do it. It always doesn't work out for me. Pamatha is staring out the window as you approach. I miss flying, reader darling. Take it from me. It feels as good as you'd expect. It's not enough of those for those Commonwealth brutes to cast us down here. If they can get their fingers on us, they make sure we never fly again as once we did. All while calling it an act of mercy. Let me ask you something, hmm? You've learned a thing or two. What have your studies taught you of my kind? Ooh, we're learning about the harps. We're reflecting on them. You can say that you know the violence they uh, they have caused, what they have suffered, that you share a common ancestor, or you know little of their kind. Let's see. That's confusing. You know you share a common ancestor. It is said when some of the ancient harps relinquished their wings, the conflict began. Wait, saying that everybody had wings and only some of us stopped using them? That's crazy. That'd be interesting. Yeah, let's take the neutral option, the the bridge building a bridge option. The common ancestor. You understand that long ago there was only one tribe. They flew together and conquered the known world. But some of their descendants descendants were born different. These wingless ones had little choice but to tend the land with their hands of flesh. Over time, the wingless were disavowed, abandoned. It is said that they were born under dark stars. In time, they formed the Empire, and they fought back. Not all the winged and wingless were at odds, and famous harps such as Saint Trius to Titus proved kinship could be possible. Nonetheless, old hatreds are not easily assuaged. Fuma. That? Is a fairly ac is fairly accurate to our account of things. So, in a manner, you yourself are brother to me. My my kind certainly aren't known for their good sense of humor. I can tell you that. My little tongue got me into no small amount of difficulty until I learned to keep it well under control. The mountains I come from, the views were cer the views there certainly are something, but there's a bleakness to it too being surrounded only by those consumed with by their desire to avenge. We're very proud like that. Everybody vying to be the strongest, to kill the most of you. That way, we might just get a shot with the prince. Continue the line, if even exists. The prince. Your understanding is that the males of the harp are all gone, though perhaps one remains. They, ma uh, they mate as poison spiders do. <laughs> and would slay each other in their sleep. The Arch Justice Andropos the Ninth. What a lovable person with, with great ideas of how other people work. Imagine that being the best scenario, 
Imagine that being the best case scenario, darling. She shakes her head. Anyway, I was just thinking I rather enjoy the traveling we've done. The change of scenery does me some good. Perhaps I'll stick to wandering after all this. In fact, I've a fancy for some wandering right now, if you'll excuse me. She heads out the wagon into the stark ba uh, badlands of Jomora Valley. Pretty much already know what that is, yeah. And so we return to the inside of the ship. It's interesting. Uh, on one hand, I like getting new trinkets in this menu here. But on the other hand, it might be best to... Uh, Ash and coal wouldn't be a terrible thing to hold on to either. It honestly might be best because of the low values of the items and the fact that I almost never actually find stuff I want because I'm so happy with the stuff I already have. It actually might be better to focus on vocations, but the scenario where I get to get an item also is like a story scenario and I kind of want to see those play out. So I might still keep doing those instead of vocations even though I would benefit better from vocations. Eh, mixed responses. The game finds its chances to tell me to do vocations regardless. Bring of Jomwar. Let's do this. The dissidents once again. And what do we have here? The Spring of Jomwar from Loose Glory and Hundred Minds the Scholar. I oft times think the carapace of the Hive Titan. Bialantheus shall be an everlasting blemish on the almost splendid bit of on an on an almost splendid bit of land. But Jomawar in his brashness felled the monster with a certain flare. Yes, the moon shone through the ridges of the massive carapace, and shined upon the pooling ichor, turning it into the freshest nectar ever to be tasted. The spring shall flow eternally, and those who walk within it shall experience the resplendent glory of the land. The stars began to fall there in the spring with regularity, and we know now and we now know how soon again they shall do so, and we wish for you to see it for yourself. It was like a it's some sort of giant Oh yeah, it's a giant scorpion monster that's been crushed by a boulder because apparently Jomo Rare was just the biggest badass. Look at this thing. It's huge. Hey, guys. You know what I was thinking. Maybe I should just have a sale or something here sometime, but then, again, my prices are just as low as they can go, so I don't think I can. Just can't do it, guys. I don't believe you. There's the stuff. Plus five. Did I just sell this? It's only worth 13, so it's like not even worth selling. <laughs> I don't like selling stuff in general, even though I know I'm not going to use, like, any of these. This one's only plus two quickness. I guess it would be more quickness if I bought- if I used the thing on it. Either way, I want this. There we go. Plus four quickness. So maybe when you max it out, it becomes plus eight quickness, which could be pretty good, actually. There's a lot of quickness. Yeah, it might be worth upgrading with when I run out of other stuff to upgrade. So, be seeing you guys. Downside climate. In the words of Jomu or many main, the Alpha Chief. I know of no polite way to describe the climate here. It oppresses every living thing, except perhaps the native flora in a few specific areas. Once more, the recommended course is to keep moving. Moving keeps you warm when it is cold, or when it is very hot, you use what strength you can to move to somewhere you, th you can think and breathe. The weather on the downside seems intrinsic to the different regions, which my good friend Molten Millith shall describe. Shelter can be difficult to find, and you cannot stay in it for very long. Perhaps, however, <clears throat> perhaps, however, shelter can accompany you rather than constrain you. Do curs have hands? How do they write? How does he write? Did they not have paws? I'm trying to remember Ruki's hand now. Did he ever? Did they ever show up? I didn't think about this. Now it's too late. 
I didn't think about this when I had the chance. Oh no. As you await the stars, a form dressed in raiments of the rites approaches you and Volfred. You at first presume it to be one of your next adversaries, the dis dissidents, but he cannot be one of them. Beside you, Volfred starts. Something you have never seen him do. You observe the colors that he wears, an inverse of the night wings. Volfred's sandal would it has been in a while. No, this cannot be. The demon unfastens his mask. It can. You perished. I watched you fall. You did. I grieved for years, yet now you live. I do. Although these horns, they grew long ere I could walk again. Unbelievable. Then why are you here now, Orelek? Orelek is a former exile of the Nightwings, betrayed and abandoned in his moment of glory. You know full well, Volfred, to reclaim what is mine by right. The demon Orlek leaves without another word, just as the stars above burst to life and seem to be set, set the sky aflame. Wait, is he in the other group? Has he joined Barker? Has he re replaced Barker? Time Singer Harn. Your adversary shall receive plus 50% stamina for use with their abilities. No. Too busy being on hard mode. lunacy is this? Twould appear the Nightwings are to stand against themselves this time around. This is a mutiny in violation of the sacred law. The exile whom you face? Orelek. Long ago he had his chance, and he relinquished it. He cannot simply claim it now, and I cannot preside over this nonsense. Good night. Narrator's not happy. What happened to the dissidents? The stars showed we were to face them. They must have suffered a misfortune of some sort. Tampering with the star's design is not permitted, Orlek. Cheating the worthy of their rightful liberty is not permitted either, Volfred. You must know I took no part in that betrayal. Search your heart. Orlek says nothing for a time, then. Where are your raiments, Volfred? I have refused to wear them since, in show of solidarity to you. And to elude the voice, I would suppose. Yes, that too. I see. And you were never very good at this anyway. We shall see if that new lot of yours is any better. You cannot be serious. What sense is there in us standing against each other? The Orlek puts on his mask and stands ready. I shall crush this lot of yours, Volfred. You shall see that I am not so easily discarded, and you shall not deny my liberty again. No, I was here to fight the dissidents. Now I won't know how they react to Ruki, especially if that misfortune is any worse than it sounds. Reader, the adversary whom you face, Orlek, he is not one to back down. He is very experienced in the rites even at the time, and so, beware. There was no one in his day who could prevail against him, and he appears even stronger now. I wish I had more valuable advice to give. In this, I, w I wish I had foreseen this. Uh-oh, uh-oh, and we have a missing character too to deal with. Oh wow, look at the presents. 40. It's a yellow number. Does that mean that's the actual hard cap? Rank overwhelming. Ooh. 40. That's gargantuan and irritating. He has 20. 20 glory. Alright. Long stride. If you're using rush to lunge forward, Orlek can rush again right away. Brazen Manor. For seven, seconds after, uh, once, for seven seconds after saluting their adversaries, Orlek deals an additional 10 damage to the adversary's pyre. Shit. Crushing Heal. When landing from a jump, Orlek briefly stuns nearby adversaries. That's the usual one. I basically just assume that they have that usually. 
Look at this character bio. Better take a brief drink of water. He's a former exile of the Nightwings, betrayed and abandoned in his moment of glory. Demon. Physician? One of the exceptional... One with exceptional knowledge of the mind and body, and their ceaseless list of vague concerns. He's a stern-faced demon who once served the Nightwings and claimed to have been cheated of his freedom. After toiling in the downside for many, many years, he has reformed his own version of the Triumvirate to which he once belonged now called the True Nightwings. He seems to hate the very essence of the rites. A splinter faction describes most favorite triumvirate, led by Demon Orlek. I'm looking at him and it, it uh... He said the horns grow for, grew from him being here for so long? That helmet cannot fit on him, by the way. That mask. Like, I know they have to make all the characters look identical, so they based all of the helms on basically Jordario, but, uh... He has two horns coming out of his forehead. That can't possibly fit. Sounds like his legs and his horns might have been broken and his horns may have grown back over time. Oh, that's those are sleeves. Never mind. I thought that the... Uh, I thought that sleeve... The first part of the sleeve, I thought that was his previous horns. Like the original thickness and the new horns started growing out of their stumps after they broke off or something after some tragedy. But it seems like that he has his strange little sleeves on his head for some reason. Looking like an, uh, one of those ja uh, paintings of like Japanese samurai a little bit. Well, Big Bear Trude still has plenty to go. And shooting through barriers is kind of amazing. With this crew, I'd probably have to go with Gilman and Pamatha. I don't think I want- I don't think I want to double up on two heavy hitter defensive characters, especially if, uh, well, not a crazy idea, because, uh, Dodario's the big, slow, lumbering character, but, uh, you can actually, uh, get some mileage. Get that bonus damage in there, Gilman. You're gonna be a primary scorer, probably. Dodario. Right. I forgot to check their things to see if I could upgrade their ranks. Crap. Let's see. So you're the one that has the... Yeah, farther and faster aura. Oops. Clicked on the wrong thing completely. Nailed it. Yeah, 30%. So I could eventually upgrade this so that it does 45 and then... And then, uh, 60%, it uh, looks like. 60% farther and faster aura would be pretty good for offensive purposes. Yeah. Let's have her bring back this for defensive purposes. I'm gonna have her defending... I think Jadariel and Milith are... Not Milith, uh... Jadariel and... Bertrude are gonna be on defense mode, and Gilman's gonna be on offense, and then... When Gilman's consumed in the pyre then Bear, Bear Trude will probably be scoring at that point. That Volfred had best explain... Uh, that Volfred had better... that Did a very long D&D &D session, I'm a little spent. That Volfred had best further explain whom we are up against. Such a triumvirate you have assembled, Volfred. Then let us see what they can do. Come and face me, false Nightwings. He seems like a nice guy. Oh, damn it. There's, these O's are so fast. Woo! Oh, out of stamina. That's not good. Gotcha. I've got the big aura. Oop. Oh, I dashed into it. No. Oh, shit. Wow, that was a monumental screw up. I didn't hit you. Uh, 
Oh, you don't go through walls with that. Mistake on my part. Whoa! Whoa, he jumped far. Damn those characters. Can't just jump forever, damn it. There we go. Gotcha. Plus five. That's a little bit of catch up. He jumps a lot. Yeah. There goes the aura. Oh. Oh. Oh, shit. Ah, I have such bad reactions to some of these moments. No. You have grown weak, dragging through the mud, the good name of the Nightwings, all the while. Ah, you got me? Shit. Oh, you got me too. Son of a bitch. Did I get you? Good. Oh, Jesus. Ah! Ah, no. I didn't jump in time? No! I want to jump. Dariel? Oh, shit, your tiny aura. Jesus. Oh, my God, his aura is ridiculous. Stop that. Oh, crap. Jesus. Oh, he's just fucking spawn camping. Oh, my God. This is a problem. His aura is so ridiculous that he can go into our base and just, like, take out everybody, basically. Oh, jeez. Gotta try to buy some time. There we go. Use this. No, what? Shit, shit, shit. Switch, switch, switch. 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 Sw what? No. How did I get over here? Shit. No. Fuck. <sighs> ah, a camera pan. I think it killed me. I pressed. I was. I was pressing in to switch to the other side of the team. I'm trying to get back to the left side, and like the camera wasn't panning fast enough. I'm like, no, I need to. No, I need to play those characters because he got past me. Ah, fuck. That went exceptionally poorly. As expected, you sh you call yourself the Nightwings, but you are only you you are they only a name. And as for the rights, it is a mockery of what it once stood for. All of this a stain upon the legacy of the scribes. Wolfred looks on as Orelek departs with another word. Orelek, forgive me. Uh, it's explaining time, Mr. Wolfred. Is what the hell's happening? Hey, rank four. This night wonders at times about why we are here and which forces have transpired to bring us together. Has under King Oris himself taken any interest in this, his noble quest? For ten seconds after banishing an adversary, Sir Gilman does bonus damage to the pyre. I don't know how likely that is to happen. That freezes people. Oh, man. I think I need this one now. After Sir Grimlin banishes an adversary, one of his a banished allies shall instantly return. I need- I need to- I need something like that to change the- change the, uh, course of things, because that's becoming really relevant now. I gotta get used to these strange new characters I'm playing as. Because the core people are kind of swapped out, the really reliable, easy characters. I couldn't even use Faye in that one. Orelek. No. He has changed. Scarce resembles now the ones the one with whom we traveled then. I'm afraid so. I can only begin to imagine what he has been through after all these years. Reader, as you can see, Orelek and I we have some years in common. A story for another day. I think some time... I need some time to look at how all this affects our plan. 45% for now. Reader, sir. Orlek is a... is a principled person. His freedom was denied him. 
just when it was his in his grasp. A doleful tale. Volfred shall tell you more of him in due time. Of that I have no doubt. For now, it seems the stars beseech you once again outside. There, deep in the infinite dark, once more you see a single star shining brighter than the rest. Oh. Liberation time? This has been a weird journey. We have a, a, a match I threw on purpose. A match... Yeah, it was a match I threw on purpose, followed by a match where, uh... We are on a special weird island, followed by a match that I lost. Is he on here? I don't currently see Volfred on here. Not Volfred, sorry, uh, the new guy. Uh... Essence is still highest ranking, I guess we're facing off against them then. Soli and the Golden Star. Challenge the Essence. Hamatha. Once more then, onto the fall of Solium. Excellent. Our plan proceeds at pace. We need but continue to make good on all the such opportunities the stars present, so much as possible. Then our ranks within the Commonwealth may yet grow strong enough that we shall sway the people toward our cause. It shall be difficult, but the people have their hearts and conscious and in consciences, and the Commonwealth has long since lost its way. The never-ending wars of the High Wing Remnants, the passing of more sentences of exile than ever before, for increasingly more dubious causes. The burning of books, the outlawing of literacy, these are corruptions of the teachings of the scribes. Together, we shall prove it soon enough. Wolfred, sir, what of Orlac? Wolfred says nothing in response at first, but then... Orlac appears to have his own agenda now. We shall have to try and keep an eye on him, although... Our plan remains the same. Anyway, we have a mountain which we need to climb. Let's all rest up a bit, if possible. This night, we fly at break of dawn.